Radar has an optional expander called Blip. It has its own power cable and it connects with a serial cable to the back of Radar. The serial cables long enough they can be placed on either side of Radar. Since Radar itself is digital, Blip adds a bunch of new functions to it. Some of them quite common that you'll be using all the time, some of them a bit esoteric. It has a very good reference document online. I'm going to run through some of my favorite functions. You select the different functions with these buttons in this section here. A lot of the buttons have two different functions. When the LED is on solid, the text in black is the function. If you press the button one more time, it starts blinking white. The little black text that's running vertically is the second function's name. And then switching to any button changes what you're about to edit. All editing takes place with this rotary encoder down here, which you can also push to access additional system settings. Let's go through some of these in order. The very first one is called D-Trig, which is not digital trigger, but don't trigger. Now, normally, when I have one gate patched into the number one input on radar, it cascades or normals down to all the other inputs. You see all the other channels get triggered. If there's a particular channel I don't want to be triggered, maybe because I have stuff pre-patched, maybe because I want something that's repeating in the LFO not to be reset, a trigger will reset the repeating channel back to the beginning again, I can go ahead and say, go ahead and ignore the input jack for that channel. For example, I'm a trigger here, I'll select channel number two, and now you'll see from its LED down here, that's just ignoring that gate input. I go ahead and turn off number one. No filter sweep, just a little bit of VCA in there. Or turn off the VCA and it doesn't trigger. I'm gonna leave number two set to don't trigger because I'm gonna be taking advantage of that in a minute. When I press the button again underneath D-Trig, I get the invert function. That says basically invert the output. So rather than starting low at zero volts and going up to 10, it starts at 10 and then dips down to zero and rises back up to 10 again. I'll go ahead and select channel one, watch the data. You'll see it immediately jumped up to my 10 volt line. And now I have a reverse envelope. Normal operation. Next in line is E-Seq, or envelope sequence. This way I can say when one channel has finished either its rise or fall stage, go ahead and trigger any other number of channels that I choose. I'm going to switch over to E-Seq mode. I'm going to hold it down and say I want to reprogram what number one does. And now I'm going to say, well, let's go ahead and trigger number two. One press with a blue indicator says trigger output number two at the end of the rise time of number one. And to see that, let's go ahead and patch that up so you can see that on data. Take output number two here, run it into data. And for that matter, let's go ahead and mix together. In my three, two, one utility mixer here, these outputs, so we can hear them combined, going to our filter cutoff. Take the output there, ECF cutoff there. Zero attack or zero rise time, both envelopes are going to trigger immediately. Let's get this out of your way. But as soon as I start adding some attack time to number one, we only need a double trigger here. After number one has finished its attack, you'll hear number two come in. We're going to have it as a double rise. The second press says instead, wait until the fall or the release stage is done before triggering that second envelope. Now if I go ahead and snap this up a bit. And I start getting some nice blippy envelopes. Particularly if I have a little bit of attack time. sequence together as many envelopes as you want. I could go ahead and have number one or any of these trigger any of the other envelopes. 
I can then have those later envelopes trigger other envelopes to create these very complex evolving chains. I can then have it come back and trigger the first envelope again, so they'll start creating repeating patterns. Now you can see where this becomes a very complex envelope and modulation generator. But for now, I'm going to turn off the sequence. Instead, I'm going to play around with delay. It basically says, delay the start of the chosen envelope. Now to hear this in effect, I'm going to go back to my disable trig, say, let's go ahead and trigger number two as well. So they're both triggering normally, no one's disabled. Go back to delay and start delaying envelope number one in relation to number two. Now with this set to zero, all the LEDs off, you can see on the data display, they're both triggering at the same time. As I start delaying the first envelope, you hear that double attack as I delay envelope number one. And you see it over here in the LEDs as well. Go ahead and change these times a little bit. Cut down the amount of time. You get a nice little double blip, sort of a horn blip sort of sound. And you may get quite a long delay. something very small. Back to normal. The second function underneath delay is shape AD swap. Basically take that control voltage input that we had that was changing the shape and instead assign it to one of these knobs downstream. I'm going to simplify my patch again by taking the second envelope out of the equation, just so we don't get confused. I know some of you cringed the way I pulled my cables out. I should grab them by the strain relief. I apologize. Let's take my mod wheel output number five. As you remember, normally the mod wheel would go to the shape control here. Let's make this snap your envelope. If instead I want that to go to envelope time, I go ahead and take advantage of this SAD swap. Press one more time where it's blinking, choose which channel I want to edit, in this case number one. One press, blue says swap this with the attack time. So right now I have a fairly fast envelope, but I start slowing down the attack. In this mode, zero to five volts mimics the range of the control. I have my mod wheel going over 10 volts. That's why I have a very limited range right here. Press that a second time to go to a red LED. Now the shape has been swapped with the decay release time. Very fast. Progressively longer decay release as I increase the voltage going to that input. Then a third press turns it to purple mode. It looks kind of whitish on the camera, I admit. Now that swaps that voltage to control both of these knobs. And one more press turns it off. We're back to normal operation where that CV controls the shape. This first CV always stays as a toggle between attack decay mode and attack release mode. I'll move these cables aside here just to give you a better view again to what's going on. Now let's go ahead and go to the next one, which is level. And you've seen me play with S1 before. Basically, it acts as digital attenuators in each of these eight outputs, so you don't need to chew up additional channels in your utility mixers. Defaults to full volume, so I'm getting a full filter sweep. Increase the release time a little bit here. But by choosing number one, which I have already, I can decrease its level. You can see it on the data display and hear it through the output of the Moog filter. Not only
only does this work great as attenuators, but when you start chaining together multiple envelopes, either using these analog or pick the highest level modes, or using the sequencing commands, or even the delay commands for that matter, you can start adding together the different lanes at different levels. So again, you can get really complex with the composite envelope shapes you can create with the eight channels of radar. Another function it has this, this unique thing called roll. Basically, it offsets the level of your envelope, but if when it hits the top, rather than clipping, it jumps back down to zero. So here's my normal envelope shape. But as I increase roll, one, you'll see the level come up there, and you'll see that it's actually inverted during part of the cycle, basically wherever it would exceed 10 volts. And you can choose where that level happens. Now, when you have this in repeating mode, this is where you start creating some pretty complex envelope shapes. Let's go ahead and turn up VCA so you can always hear this. and roll back down to zero. If you find that you've made a complete mess of things, there is a reset command where you can choose individually which channels you want to clear out all the settings you've changed over on radar here. There's also a reset all, the one blinking down here. And there's indeed presets, eight different presets that you can go ahead and save or recall. You can recall them using the buttons here. You can recall them using control voltages or using gate inputs as well to go ahead and step through different presets. Whenever you power up blip, it recalls preset number one and sends that to radar. Now it does take a little while to rearrange what radar does. It's about 45 milliseconds or so. So it's kind of hard to sequence during sustained notes, but it's a good thing to sequence, say, if you want to use the same envelope generator to create radically different sounds from the same patch. Change the presets, completely change what radar is doing. It does not affect the times or the shapes set on these knobs, but it does affect all these additional controls. Now beyond that, <laughs> Blip has all sorts of other commands it can do. You may remember where I said the equal or opposite mode affects pairs of channels. You can go ahead and say, no, let's go ahead and just flip what it does for one channel rather than both channels. You can determine whether or not radar listens to a system bus. It can be shared with other modules. It has randomization functions as well, all sorts of different things. I'll admit when I first got Blip, I didn't even use this for many months. But now that I've familiarized myself with all the different commands, I'm reaching for it all the time, either just to give myself some quick level adjustments, to turn off the triggers from some of the channels, or to take advantage of these delays and sequence functions. It really does open up what radar can do.